rolling? Yeah. All right, so here with my buddy Joe. It's nighttime, obviously. Charlie the dog. Um, and he was, Joe was asking, what, what, what are we going to talk about? And I said, whatever you want to talk about. And Joe works at Walmart, and I find this pretty fascinating. And Holy I'll shit! Just let you begin. Just tell your story, because this is crazy. Um, okay, so I got, uh, when, it, when I went, when I left my Koosh job, like basically sitting around all day not doing anything and getting yeah. paid for it. Which is what I still do. <laughs> well, yeah, pretty much. I think it was even on a whole other level that I was literally not doing anything. Um, and still to this point, would not be doing anything, as, I, as, it, as it turns out. Well, um, <laughs> so I ran into somebody from the office over, um, in Walmart the other day and um, that I used to work with over there. In uh, implementations, and it was like, she's like, yeah, no, that that project that he's like, we were talking about it. She's like, that project didn't even start. Oh, it, it halted before it even started, and everybody's still just sitting around, not doing anything. A year, like, <laughs> it's been like a year, over a year for a lot of those guys that they haven't actually done anything. They just don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, they haven't been on any projects. They, they they show up. You gotta, you're supposed to be there like 40 hours a week. But there's nothing to do, so you just like surf the web all day and like try and keep keep your bandwidth levels up. You well, and you used to tell me you used to tell me what uh what movies you were watching on your laptop, right? And then I would send you links to podcasts, and then I remember at one point you had your jogging clothes in your car, mm -hmm. and you take like a fucking two hour break and just go walk around town. Yeah, on yeah. the clock. That's yeah. That's which is hilarious. <laughs> So go from that to the extreme opposite end of the spectrum of what you're doing now. Right. So, um, so I got really bad information from somebody and took a job at Walmart um, where supposedly they don't uh, give any overtime. Well, that was an hourly manager, and they wrote me in as a salaried manager. So there you go. I get uh, about 13 to 16 hours a day on average. Um, that's seven days a week too, right? Uh, Normally, they'll give me a day off here and there. Uh, today was one of them. Yeah. Thank God. Usually you'll go uh, about a week or so and then get a day off, you know, because you're just totally burnt out and. It's unreal. <laughs> um, yeah, a handful of those. I mean, in that, it wouldn't. I can handle a long, a long day. You know, I can handle a lot of hours, but like well, you got to have yeah. breaks in there, right? Right. Um, there's been and there's been a handful of days there where I didn't get any break. You know, well, usually I don't get a break. I'll get maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes if I'm lucky, where I can shove some food down my throat and get back out there. Good thing it's a grocery store. Right, but yeah, there's been a handful of them where like I literally didn't even get the pee. So like you're like 16 hours. You know, I get get in there at like 6 a.m. Uh, get out around like 11, 12 o'clock at night. Well, tell everybody what your uh, position is mm. actually. Sure. Uh, so I'm the this. auto care center manager. <clears throat> and is that, that's not open 24 hours. No. No, but, but... You're there from open to close. Open to close for that, which is uh, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then you got administrative stuff. Right. Um, for the handful of employees that I had. You know, I'm doing all right now. I got a few more people hired, but for a while there it was... Um, but I didn't have any employees, so I was there open to close seven days a week. That, that was the issue. And when it's service-based like that, you know, you have to have somebody at the counter. That was me. Right. Um, so, but, I mean, when I, when I work 6 a.m. to, like, midnight, get home and realize, you know, it's like I'm, like, rushing to get home, speeding because I got to pee really bad. Well, as it turns out, then I, I think about it, like, I didn't take a piss break all day. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Roy, can you get sick drinking piss? I've got to be I think you can. Even if it's your own? <laughs> like, I can remember I can remember peeing in the, when I woke up in the morning, you know, you hop in the shower, you do your thing, go to work, and then, yeah, yeah there was no break. You know, and that's happened, that's happened a handful of times where... Um, that was an extreme case, but a lot of times, you know, I'll do the, you know, get in there at 6.30, uh, or so in the morning 
and stay there till closing, you know, eight o'clock, nine o'clock maybe is usually about when I get out and then get home and realize I hadn't even got a chance to pee all day. Which is another extreme from the previous job. Right. Take naps in the stalls and <laughs> right. whatnot. Just trying to figure out what to do to keep, you know, <laughs> keep your activities level up and use a lot of bandwidth so it looks like you're doing stuff. Unbelievable. Unbelievably true and unbelievable. Um, man, so, yeah, and how many months have you been there? Uh three four months now something like that and how many people have you fired mm. three Did three more, how many quit oh well <laughs> so have i actually fired uh none of them they all just well one and the rest just quit uh there's been three or four five there's been a handful of people that just walked out yeah. So, yeah, it's not an easy situation to walk into for sure. Well, no, and it was all fucked up to begin with, too, because they didn't have a manager there for like a year or some shit before I came in there. So it was just like <laughs> outstanding. The nuts were running the asylum, you know. Right. Um, it is, it's, yeah, it's been a difficult task to get them all on board with actually having somebody there that. <laughs> is in charge right uh they don't they don't want to relinquish that power you know yeah understand been there done that for sure don't miss it yeah but you were kind of like legitimate like legitimately doing dealing with nuts right weren't you um no i i never worked at the state hospital level it was just people with uh, developmental disabilities. Oh, okay. Just people with like mental retardation, which is now classified as intellectually disabled, and, and they got a lot of medical problems too. A lot of them. It's it's a it's a tough job, but it's a. I mean, if, you, if the people I worked with, they're just very dedicated to that type of work, and they're really really good at it. Yeah. Uh, and it's one of those jobs where. You figure out, not me, when I hire somebody, but when you come into that position, you figure out really quick if you can do it or not. And that's one good thing about it, because you definitely, as a manager, from a manager's point of view, you definitely don't want to have anybody come in and work there for a long time and not know what the hell they're doing because there's so many things that you're responsible for. You're responsible for their personal care, their hygiene, their meals, activities, their medications, which you can really fuck somebody up on if you screw that up. Uh, so yeah, Come it was a, Don't bullshit me. a hell of a job for quite a few years. Started off in a large group setting and then became a manager of a group setting and then became a manager of many houses 22 staff I think we were over we took care of about 50 people our situation has not improved then I became a case manager and then eligibility specialist and the it's like a needs assessment determines the it's all Medicaid funded most of it mm -hmm. determines the level of funding you get so, and that was my probably my favorite job I ever had, except for this one because now <laughs> setting fraud and working bank accounts, you just sit there and listen to music or podcasts all damn day and answer the phone when it rings, which it hardly ever does anymore. But yeah, that was a. Uh, and the funny thing to me is how underpaid those. Uh, care providers of those social workers are because I was a manager and I moved over I was a, it was called a residential facility manager and I had five staff we took care of four guys and it's just all over the place you're responsible for so much stuff I mean you're responsible for their medications the counts the schedule the staffing um, all their books, all their logs, 
buying the food. So you don't have to have any kind of like medical background to even, I mean, if you're, you're in charge of their medication and stuff? It's the counts and the administration. Mm -hmm. You get trained under the nurse because she has the, the license through the state. He or she, they're all the women. Um, and then if you make errors, you can get fired if you make enough errors. I mean, yeah. it's just that kind of deal. And, uh, well, you don't and, like... and their bank accounts. I mean, shit, you're in charge of that, too. You can, like, uh, OD somebody, you know? Yeah, it's kind of a big deal if you it's have an error. Big shit deal, especially with those, I mean, with lots of psych meds, seizure medications, mm. all kinds of shit like that. I mean, you got to monitor their food and water intakes, all kinds of stuff. Physical assistance. I mean, a lot of these guys, some of these guys can't walk. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big deal. You only need the uh, medical background and degree if you're going to be a nurse because you have to do that to be a registered nurse um so yeah anyways what i was getting at was it's just it's it's hilarious how you have that much responsibility which i eventually just got burned out and said fuck it i'm not doing it anymore that's when you hooked me up at you know where i'm at now make that transition i'm at baseline you know bottom of the trough equal money yeah equal money and it's like it just baffled me it's like god i could have been doing this <laughs> 95 percent less stress <laughs> got an awesome supervisor on top of it jesus show me in yeah it's, it's amazing how many people around there though they just bag on it they think it's like this terrible thing i yeah, they, do not they, understand that one bit <laughs> and there's some people that I work with that'll watch this podcast, and I don't know what they'll think. Probably the same thing I'm, that you and I are thinking. It's like, how are you bitching about this job, man? <laughs> right. Go do what I did for a while. Shit. Yeah. It, my buddy Dan from uh, Kansas, when he, he trained me. My first job working in a, a house. Um, he said that He'd seen people come in on their first day, and within a half hour, they ran out <laughs> and never came back. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> but, and then you've got people that have been there for 40 years, right. 30 years. I mean, they love it. And that's awesome. You need people like that. And there's great people out there. But then there's uh, the notorious story about where I work and where you used to work about, uh, what was it, they offered overtime on a weekend or something, and the person came in and clocked out and went shopping all day or some shit, oh, and man. then came back eight hours later and clocked out and went home. <laughs> oh, that kind of, yeah, that kind of stuff went on a lot, actually. You even told me a story about a person that <laughs> came and clocked in and then went to another job. Right. <laughs> came back and clocked this... out after their shift was over from the Come other on. job. Don't bullshit. Right. And they were oh in this. Gosh, and, and once it was uncovered, it didn't take long for them to figure out, you know, what was going on. But then even once it was uncovered, you know, they had to start the process to get rid of this person. Yeah, you couldn't even fire them on the spot. Yeah. That's... <laughs> and so this person just continued to... <laughs> show up to work clock in go to the other job come back you know clock out i'm sure there's a little more to it than that but it's i mean in a nutshell that's what was going on and uh, uh, to me is hilarious but god people will come up with anything right yeah I... <laughs> so, isn't... i'm still actually friends with that person on facebook and That's, that, that's some serious balls right there to do something like that. I could never do that. Oh, man. And, and, I, and, and then I wouldn't get away with it. You know, I would I would be the person that would get caught, like, first time trying to, you know, leave the building while I was clocked in and yeah. get fired on the spot or something. Yeah, no shit. Oh, God. But I don't, I don't know. I, I, I like getting to work. You know, you, you get it like an – it's like an escape from all of the – or other shit that's going on in your life, you know, like yeah, you can sure. get there and you can zone out and just be your work persona, you know. 
it's almost a form of therapy kind of because being able to be on your phone with free Wi-Fi and all the stuff that's available, music, podcasts, audiobooks, it is like a form of therapy. You can just, especially once you've been there long enough that you know what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, it's just become second nature. And, it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I pretty much, I mean, I'm already pretty much at that point with Walmart. Yeah. Or like I get there and I almost like I check my Joe checks out, you know, and <laughs> the my work Joe checks in, you know, and uh, I feel like I'm two different people. You ever had to uh, resolve a conflict with a customer yet? Oh uh, yeah, all the time, man. Really? People are always pissed off there. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm pretty lucky in a sense because I really don't have. A whole lot of issues. Downstairs. But once in a while it just happens. You get somebody that they're just pissed as hell. Yeah. They blame us for their credit card getting compromised. It's like, hey man, criminal's one step ahead of us. You know, we can do about it. We're trying our hardest. Right. We're taking care of you. I think for for us, you know, being being service, then they're like, you know, people are so used to this um, old school way of doing things. Where you, know, I, I don't know, people. It, there was a lot of places. It seems like you know that I can recall where it used to be. You could go in, get an oil change in 15 minutes, and be on your way. And I mean, <clears throat> the way that cars are now, it just takes longer. One, yeah. um, a lot of almost every car has got skid plates. On it. it takes fucking five minutes just to get a skid plate back on and uh, just to be able to change the oil you know to get to it and people get upset downstairs that's crazy yeah um like i said but uh, it'll take like an hour and they don't understand that. like well we've got two pits we can do two cars at a time and there's like six cars here you're number seven yeah it's going to be a little bit, like an hour, hour and a half maybe before we can get to it. I took the expedition in yesterday just to get the battery replaced. Is that for 35 minutes? <laughs> yeah. That's not bad, man. <clears throat> yeah, it, it we wasn't. Get, we get so busy but, there because our prices are like, it's Walmart. So our prices are like half of what everybody else has. And we get so busy where, I mean, people come in for a battery or like, I mean, if you want us to put it in, it's going to be like three hours. Holy shit. Yeah, the only reason I had them do I mean, think about how easy it is to take out a battery and put a battery in. But mm -hmm. the free installation, they gave me a rebate if they'd installed it. I'm like, all right, what the hell? I'll let y'all do it and if you mess it up. And I got a six-year warranty with it, so that was pretty cool. Cool. <clears throat> six-year battery, full warranty. I was like, all right, fine. Beats the hell out of going to O'Reilly's and paying more to put it in yourself. Right. You feel like... Uh, feel like you're able to handle those long hours with no breaks and stuff because of your military background? I don't know if it's that per se. I think I've, I've, I did that, um, I used to have a kiosk at the mall. Okay. And it was very much the same thing. Thank you. Where, um, I would go there open to close the hours of the mall, which... I don't remember, but it was like, I think it was like 10 a.m. till probably like 9 p.m. or something like that, you know? Yeah. And that was seven days a week because I was sole proprietorship, you know? Okay. And I didn't have employees, you know, you gotta... Of course, I was... I don't, I don't know. It's... I don't mind working long hours at all. It, it seems like almost all the jobs that I've had, I've always had to work like crazy long hours. Uh, worked for Norwegian Cruise Lines for a while. That, that was some crazy hours. <laughs> yeah, you know, you. It, the cool thing though with, with that was that it was hourly. So, by you work the way the way that that works is you sign up for like a six month tour basically with them. Yeah. So you're on contract and you. Um, you, it's seven days a week that you work. Um, 
we did a seven day cruise around the islands. <clears throat> you were on the ship. Yeah, so my job was the second worst job on the ship. Um, I cleaned up I, I, at, uh, I started my shift at like 10, 10 p.m. and worked until uh, about between, usually I got off I think between like noon and 6 p.m., something like that the next day. And uh, basically just cleaned up all the galleys at night. So we had to have everything spotless. And That's fun. There's me and one other guy that did that for, I think there was, there's like six or seven restaurants. Okay. And uh, it sucked. Uh, the worst job though, yeah, I mean it was cool because by Tuesday you, you hit overtime, you know. You, oh, okay. You know, you, you work probably about 18 hours a day mm -hmm. or so, you know, 15, 18 hours a day, something like that. You get breaks, plenty of breaks, so you can go take a nap while you're working because you're, you live on the ship, you know, you've got a bunk and everything. Yeah. But there was uh, these poor souls that were the uh, garbage sorters. That's the worst job. <laughs> so literally, like, I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise, no, but they always have <clears throat> multiple trash cans next to each other. You're supposed to separate it out. I, I want to say there's like, like one, there's one for food and there's one for um, anything with like metal, I think, and one for paper, one for, you know, you have to, you're supposed to sort it all out, right? And, that that doesn't happen. So then we actually have people on the underneath side. They get all the bags of trash, come down to a room, and there's a couple of guys there. They take all the food, you know, and it all comes onto a big table, and they sort through it. And it was like no thanks. two, three times a week because it, it, it all goes into an incinerator. The food goes overboard and feeds the marine animals, right? Okay. And there's like a certain amount of trash that can also that can go with it. And then, like, the rest has to be incinerated because you can't, you know, you got to do something with it. So we've got, like, a big incinerator. Well, you have stuff that's mixed, and it goes into that. Then it explodes, basically, and starts a fire. And it was, like, two, three times a week there was, at least, there was a fire. Jeez. And of course, all the, I, I, was, I was happy to be <clears throat> under deck, basically. You know, all the, uh, the guys that... Um, had the coos job of like handing out towels and stuff yeah. at, at poolside. They had to deal with the uh, pissed off people that were like, you know, having to, you know, <laughs> two or three times a week go through this process because the ship's on fire. That's crazy. I was more, more or less just annoyed with it. Yeah. You're like, oh shit, the ship's on fire again. <laughs> Meanwhile, none of the passengers realize the ship's on fire. That's hilarious. Damn. Is that the worst job you ever had? No, I've had worse jobs than that. I mean, I, I sold stuff. I sold stuff business to business, and it was kind of fun, but at the same time, like, I made no money, basically. It sucked. Um, so, like, there was a I was in Boise, Idaho, and we go to a warehouse, me and this group of guys, we, and there was this guy, Dan, that, that had the warehouse, and he, I don't know where he got all these, like, recalled goods. It's all, like, the most random assortment of, like, anything from, like, there was flower vases, um, children's toys, knife sets, I mean, just random things that had been recalled, and he got his hands on it and then would, like, consign it to us in the morning. Okay. Tell us a territory to go to. We go to like Eastern Oregon, um, go north. You, you go, you go east. You go south, kind of thing, you know. And we'd hit, we'd load our trunks up with as much crap as we could, and just head off and try and sell it, going business to business, you know. Uh, go back at the end of the day and cash out, and <clears throat> then get get wasted basically <laughs> then whatever money you got then we'd all chip in together and, uh the person with the least amount of of money whoever, whoever sold the least amount of crap had to go to the gas station out that was like a block away and get all of the um, burritos and stuff that they were getting ready to throw out <laughs> and so we'd all get that <laughs> all these like old burritos and stuff and then uh, we'd all chip in some money to get, you know, get a few cases of beer and we'd go over to Dan's house, his apartment, and uh, just get wasted playing drinking games. 
That was like that was live six days a week. That's crazy, man. Uh, this wasn't the worst job I ever had, but it's probably the funniest story that ever stories that ever came out of a job. When I was in college, I worked at the McDonald's right by the university for eh, a few months, and we'd <clears throat> they had me working some goofy shift like. I think it was 7 p.m. to close, which was 1 in the morning, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm -hmm. Which didn't make any sense because the dinner rush is already over by 7. And then, you know, we're all just college guys, so we are not going to get any customers because Taco Bell stayed open until 3 in the morning. <laughs> so we prepared a bunch of food and just set it into under the heat lamps or whatever cleaned all the grills, all that stuff. And then whatever was left over, which was pretty much all of it, because we never had any customers, we just take that and make sandwiches and go hit up a party and sell the burgers. <laughs> it's amazing what drunk people will pay for a Big Mac two in the morning. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Right? It's hilarious. Sometimes you don't even have to ask. Hey, you want? they'll be like, I'll pay you. I'm Mm-hmm. This is a tasty burger. Yeah, those were fun times. Goofy times. I remember this poor guy that lived across the hall from me in the dorms. He used to be in a fraternity. And then he left. And that's kind of one step away from leaving Islam. Yeah. Um, they used to coat his door in shaving cream. They broke bottles on his doorknobs. Jeez. Uh, they stole all of our lobby furniture one time. Put it on the elevator and took it somewhere else. Uh, they used to put oranges in the toilets and flush them and make the stools overflow in the, in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> fucking brutal this dude. <laughs> It's like, good God, it's like, fuck over yourselves. Funny shit, but... Yeah, man, college was interesting for sure. Did you go to college, or did you go straight into the Navy after high school? No, I didn't even finish high school, and I joined, I joined the Navy um, after working whatever weird jobs. So, how long were you in? Just four years. See some pretty cool stuff overseas at all? Or? I never went overseas, just stayed here. Um, okay. Joined the Navy, I never once saw a ship. Hmm. Uh, after basic, I, I, got, I did avionics, so I went down to, well I did a, did like an electronics uh, common core school in, um, Great Lakes, uh, up there just north of Chicago, and uh, was there for after boot. That's where you do your boot camp too. I just stayed there basically. I was there for like about six months or so, and then went down to Pensacola, Florida, and learned how to do avionics on F-18s with the Marines. Nice. And then to Oklahoma City to learn how to work on those E-6Bs, and which brought me here okay. to Offit, and I finished out my four years here. It was like, I think I had like six months left, but I had so much school that by the time I actually got like a tour, you know, which was here, yeah. by the end of it, I had like six months left. And they're like, well, either you have to sign up for another enlistment or you can get out and extend here, basically. Because they didn't want to pay to move me, basically, you know. Okay. And then you got your bachelor's at Bellevue? Yeah. And <clears throat> what's your bachelor's in? Uh, international security and intelligence studies. Okay, and then you got your master's through Creighton. Yeah. What's, that, at, what's that in? Over at Creighton Law. Uh, negotiation and dispute resolution. Which works well at Walmart. That's pretty, I was going to say, that's pretty <laughs> badass. <laughs> <laughs> I get, yeah, I get, there's plenty of irate customers. Uh, I can but imagine. This, I had this guy punch hole in my wall uh, oh, a couple shit. weeks ago. Um, oh my god! Yeah, he, he was he was upset. We were changing his oil, 
and uh, I got like a line of customers I'm trying to deal with, right? Well, mm -hmm. as a manager there, it, they, it randomly, well, there's certain cars that'll trigger what, what they call a lube audit, right? Uh, which basically means that I have to go out after, the, after everything's been completed and make sure that they did their shit right. And so his car had a lube on it. And uh, so we're done working on it. He'd been there for close to an hour at this point, you know, because we were busy. Okay. And I'm trying to get through this line of people so I can go out there and, you know, do this lube on it. But I don't have any workers on the inside. I don't have any, anybody helping me. So I just got to get through these people so I can get out there and fix his car. Yeah. Well, this guy got pissed off. He's like, he's like, hey, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah, sure. He goes, what the fuck? <laughs> like, all right. And he's like, my car's just sitting there. I said, okay, yeah, I apologize. You know, I gotta. I, as soon as I'm, as soon as I get finished right here with this customer, I'm gonna go out there and um, finish up the paperwork on it, and you'll be, you'll be good to go. That wasn't good enough for him. So he like, he freaked out. Like, I don't know. People, you see this a lot in retail. Uh, where like they're totally cool and then like I don't know like their their whole their whole person changes mm -hmm. and this dude like his face turns red and he just like turns around and punches a hole in my wall right I'm like okay so like I'm calling for security on my radio and um, you know trying to finish up with this customer I'm like is it alright if I just they're like yeah sure <laughs> I'm like thanks so I run out there finish up finish up the paperwork on his car and so he can get out of there, you know, because I don't even want him around. Right. And um, for a $20 oil change, you know. So, <laughs> as it turns out, I'm, I'm ringing this guy out. I'm like, and he pulls out his Walmart employee discount card and swipes it. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> I was like, all right. So, then, uh, you know, I, I, fin I finished ringing him up and he leaves and security, uh, it was like one of the managers uh, there um, comes over and she was like, did you get his information? I said, well, I got some of it right here, but I was like, even even better, uh, he swiped his employee badge, so <laughs> he works at another Walmart as if we're not going to be able to track him down. Jeez. That's hilarious. Who knew you could be an employee and go to a different Walmart and be that pissed off. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you know the drill, man. It's always like, and he said that too. He's like, every time I, every time I try to get my old change to Walmart, it takes forever. <clears throat> well, uh, it's because we're busy, serious. man. I don't know to tell you. <laughs> everybody, everybody has to wait. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, man. What I figured out though, Fantastic. if you if you ever do need to, if you go like first thing in the morning when they first open up, obviously you're going to be first in line. Or if you go there at the end of the day, those guys want to get out of work on time. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they start working so fast. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I get more productivity out of those guys uh, between 7 and 8 o'clock than any other hour during the day. <laughs> wow. That's funny. That's hilarious. How many people you supervise now? Uh, I think I got... I think I got 12 techs and three service riders, so like 15. I mean, that's enough. As uh, yeah, I mean, as as a manager of the store, you know, um, I'm technically like over everybody that's hourly. But I got a couple of managers underneath me too. Oh uh, really? Okay. Um, hourly managers, but. Uh, Walmart's got this thing about salaried members of management and then so on my uh, responsibilities it actually it's something like uh, over a hundred, like 150 200 employees under me good grief well I don't I don't deal with but them you all. don't deal with they, they, they come to me if they have issues because like I don't I think I'm more approachable than some of the other guys makes sense because I'm just me yeah <laughs> I'll go here. Yeah, well, I get it. Jeez, man. I got this guy, this service writer that I hired. He's insane. Really? <laughs> like, no, like, like, legitimately. Ins so, like, I was so desperate. Um, the first person that actually applied to the to the opening, um, I was like, well, he's got a pulse. I'm hiring him before I even 
met the guy, I already knew I was hiring him, mm-hmm. just so that I could have a break, right? Yeah. And uh, as it turns out, that was the worst mistake ever. This guy, he tells he tells me after I hired him, he's like, "Yeah, I got ADHD, so you know, if if you see me like getting off task or whatever, like, you know, just like." Let me know, and I'll, I'll get back to it. Like, okay, cool. It's much worse than that, though. I mean, this guy does, like, weird things. Uh, like, he, he like, take a bottle of water, and, like, in front of the customers. He'll pick it up like he's, like, he's a, like he's in WWE or something, you know, and he starts, like, chugging the water, like, really obnoxiously, like, like, making the noises and stuff. And he'll take it and, like, slam it down on the, on the counter. I'm like, all right. Like, why did you do that? <laughs> like, we need to be a little more professional here. Uh, he'll, like, show up in, like, sli- house slippers and... What? I'm like, yeah. Um, some of the... St- <laughs> like, he picked it, He picks up the phone one day and answers it. It's ringing. He picks it up and he's like, I like cold pizza. <laughs> what? That <laughs> like, didn't make any sense. I know. He, he, this dude, like, <laughs> I think he's trying to... He's, I'm pretty sure that he's one of these guys that... Either he's legitimately just a nutter... Or like he is just trying to get fired. That's what I'm thinking. Like he's this guy is just trying to get fired, right? And so that he can continue collecting benefits or whatever his whatever his story is, you know. Like it seems yeah. like he's trying to get fired. I'm sure this guy at the end of the day is going home and just like totally frustrated. Like I can't believe I'm not fired yet. Jeez, man. <laughs> I went to the store manager, I'm like, man, I gotta be able to fire this guy. Can I just like fire him? And he's like, no, you got you to write them up. You got to write them up the three times and then do all this crap, right? And I'm like, are you kidding me? And he, like, tried to wreck a car, pulling it in. <laughs> um, he, can't, he, comes oh. up, he, he comes up the other day. I think it was, I don't know, it was yesterday, the day before. Uh, he goes on his lunch break, and he's like, hey, I want to get my oil changed while I'm here. All right, cool. Everybody does this that, that works there, right? Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, I got, I got my own oil. So we, we get them signed in and everything. Well, the, the, the techs come back and they're like, we can't put this oil in there. Like, okay, what's up? He's like, well, it's 15W50. And he's just got like a Taurus or something, like a you know, beat up old Taurus that takes like 5W30 or something, you know. But he's got like this like diesel tractor engine oil. I don't know where the hell he even got it. I was going to say, is that some stuff you'd use in Alaska? <laughs> Make sure it sticks and doesn't breathe. My goodness. <laughs> and then, it, 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 okay, so the fact that he's checking people in and doesn't know that that's not the right oil is an issue right there, right? But then he comes back and I'm telling him, like, hey, um, I got this other oil right here. Do you want to just, like, swap it out? You know, I could put this on the shelf and probably sell it to somebody, I'm sure. And he's like, no, 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 I want to use that stuff. Like, we, dude, if we put that in there, it is going to kill your engine like it, you, you're just no it's gonna do damage you can't put that in there and he's like he started arguing and like raising his voice and yelling Shit, great. I'm like <laughs> who does that right man like every every time he's like oh, I just really don't want to be here like he tells me this and I'm like yeah, I'm his dogs. I, I'm this dude I'm basically like this dude's boss's boss yeah right it's like, he's coming to me, and he's like, I don't want to be here. Can I just go home? Can I, can I leave early tonight? Like, all the time. And I'm like, you don't have anything to do? I'm like, yeah, go home. Get the fuck out of here. Like, I don't want to pay you to sit around and do nothing. Like, But there's a ton of stuff to do. I know this. So I'm just like, why would you do that, though? Like, who does that? Right. Yeah. Jeez. I don't know. And I constantly have customers coming to me, and they're like, why is this guy, like, what is wrong with him? So he'll, he'll do that shit with customers too and he'll start like arguing with them or like talking about weird things like he, he comes to me the other day and he was like um he needed some time off I approved some time off for him to go to California and he goes oh uh yeah cause the, the first I needed that I need like six days at least because um the first day or two I'm sure I'm gonna get locked up what? I'm like, what? <laughs> so that's, you know, that was pretty much my reaction there. And he goes, oh, man. yeah, he, I was like, well, why is that? He's like, oh, uh, and he realized maybe and like decided that he didn't really want to talk about that per se. And then it was maybe like 10 minutes later, he comes to me and he said something about mushrooms. Oh, 
And I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, like Let's magic see. mushrooms? What do you? Let's he's like, yeah, yeah. And then it was maybe like 15 minutes later after that, you know, because I'm busy. Like I have 20 million things I'm doing, right? And this guy is supposed to be like, just take care of the customer so I get all the paperwork done and shit, right? Yeah. Well, he was like, he was going to put something away. And he was like, oh, I think, uh, he comes back like all scared. And he's like, I think I saw a ghost. <laughs> I was like, okay, what are you trying to tell me right here? Like, first you told me you were going to get locked up. Then you were talking monsters. about mushrooms. Now you're seeing ghosts. Like, what are you trying to tell me here? You know, and I'm like looking at his eyes like, are you pupils big? Like... <laughs> Time to call Peter Venkman. A customer comes up and he freaks out and runs away. Oh my god. I don't know where he went and he didn't come back for like a half an hour. This dude works for you. Yeah. Yeah, he was like, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what and he like freaked like totally like cowered and ran. That's I go to my I go to the I go to my boss, you know, and I'm like, can I please just fire this guy? Like Like, well, <laughs> what which write up what how many write ups do you have for him? I was like, two? Like Get a third one in there, and then we'll and then we'll talk. I'm like seriously, damn man, that's got to be frustrating. He started uh, stalking one of the other employees. <laughs> it's crazy. And this guy's begging to be made an example of. Wow, that's crazy. I don't. I've never supervised anybody like that. Me neither. I, it's first for me. <laughs> Man. God, that'd be hard to deal with, dude. Yeah. And, and like every every one of my other employees and uh, around the whole store is like, that dude's fucking weird. I don't want him anywhere near me. Like, I'm going to punch him next time he tries to talk to me. <laughs> yeah. I can see that. God, that'd be weird. It's almost like a game to me at this point where I'm like, do I really want to fire him or just see what happens? <laughs> your daily entertainment. I know that, you know, it's, it's been on record several times I tried to fire this guy. And at this point, I'm like, hey, I'll just hold on to him and see what he damages and then be like, should have listened to me. Man. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Definitely glad I've never experienced that before. Holy cow. That's nuts. That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. Now, if I remember right, I, th I think you said when you went through basic training in the Navy that there was a bunch of guys that didn't even know how to swim and they applied oh, yeah. to be in the Navy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kind of seems counterproductive. I don't right. really um, understand that part of it. But... Most of them... Most of the people that were that couldn't swim were African American. Okay. So I think that there might be something there. I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, I don't either. But, but it's, and then I, I, if if I knew better, I would have failed that swim test because it was. I don't remember if it was every day or just most days that they would, you know, first thing in the morning we all get up and we just immediately. You do like you have like ten minutes to get ready in the morning, mm -hmm. and then you just we ba basically just got beat up. Like they start making you PT, yeah. and then you go to breakfast and you come back and you just PT more. And that's life for two months or whatever it is. And uh, <clears throat> those guys though would go to the pool and learn how to swim. Like you said, they did that for a long time. Yeah, Before until they until back. they could pass that test, and so I don't know I don't know exactly how it works, but I would imagine that probably weekly they would have to retest, and yeah, I would have yeah. In retrospect, I should have failed that test and <laughs> went swimming, just swam all day for yeah. a month, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, when you told me that, that just immediately made me think of that line in uh, A Few Good Men when they go to Cuba. And he's like, yes, sir, we got to take the boat. And he goes, a boat? I don't like boats much. And uh, Demi Moore goes, Jesus, Kathy, you're in the Navy for crying out loud. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what made, that made me think of that. That's, That's funny. That's hilarious. I, I, uh, I lost it one day. Uh, my uh, 
my father is retired. To, you know, he was in he was in the Navy for 20 years. Yeah. And uh, we have one of those vacuum salesmen come over. They, you know what I'm talking oh, yeah. about? And they, oh, yeah. he's demonstrating his shampoo in the freaking carpet in the living in my parents' living room and stuff. You know, and me and my brother were just kind of like watching, going to the back, we're drinking beer, or whatever. I think it was around the holidays. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, he, this guy finishes up, and he's like, "So what do you think?" And my dad just like straight face looks at this guy and he's like, because this thing has like a water tank on it, right? Yeah. Um, he looks at him and he goes, well, I don't like the water. I don't, I don't, I hate water. <laughs> 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 Me and our brother just lost and we had to go in the other room again. We're like, Steve was in the Navy for 20 years and he doesn't like fucking water. That's awesome. <laughs> Maybe that's why. <laughs> that could be. That could be. Man, that's funny. I don't like water. <laughs> you crazy bastard! What the hell did you do? Now get out! So what else? It's like 33 degrees out here. It feels like. Right. It dropped. It was nice today. So nice. And it's the middle of December, and we're in it. I don't know. I mean, the fact that we could be out here in the middle of December is kind of nice. It's pretty amazing. Um, that's why when I thought we were going to do this podcast, yeah, do it outside because you wanted to have a cigar and a beer. <laughs> we're not going to smoke in the house. Right. Uh, yeah, that's funny. And then I had asked my father-in-law today because he's lived here his whole life. I said, have you ever seen it this nice in the middle of December? He said, no, never. <laughs> yeah. I, like, well, I don't believe it. Maybe there is something to that global warming shit. Well, California's on fire. That's good. <laughs> California's on fire. I, that's unbelievable how many, how big those damn things are. It's, I haven't even been paying attention. I, I, I stopped watching the news altogether. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's I don't watch local, healthy. national, international. I used to, I was doing international there for a while because I couldn't stand the local and national level <laughs> news. Yeah. And at this point, it's all just crap. Yeah, you are puked! It's mundane horse shit. And the local news, my god, the local news is like the funniest comedy show on TV. It's just <laughs> ridiculous how stupid it is. Yeah. I'm trying to be over dramatic. They all share a voice that they fake. Right. And, uh, I don't know. Most of it's horse shit you don't care about anyways. You hear about the, the, the shootings up north and then whatever the, whatever's going on with the weather and um, Nebraska Cornhusk or something or other. Well, yeah, <coughs> definitely here. That is huge news. Scott Frost is coach, which I like. I'm excited about that. See, Mike, I think I told you Mike Riley already got rehired at Oregon State as the associate head coach. <laughs> so that's hilarious to me. So he like he's, he's taking a demotion from the role that he was in. Well, I'm sure he'll just be there until he retires now because shit, he's 65 or 63 or something. I, you, yeah, that's a terrible situation for him. He's, he's a good guy. Yeah, he is. It just didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> Now it definitely didn't work out. If he would have just stayed at Oregon State, then he could have basically, I mean, and Corvallis is a small town. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's a celebrity out there. And he comes out here and basically just, like, ruins everything. <laughs> yeah, it definitely didn't go well at all. It's, it's a huge blemish on what, you know, would have been a very mediocre career. Right. <laughs> And that's the third time I think he's been a coach at Oregon State because he, he coached there for a while and then he went to the San Diego Chargers and, and he was Ryan Leaf's quarterback coach. <laughs> I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, I think he was. <laughs> that pretty sure that worked out really well, didn't it? <clears throat> and he was offensive coordinator, I believe, at USC. That's where okay. he has the Keyshawn Johnson connection. And then he went back <laughs> to... I don't know the time frame, but he was at Oregon State, and then he went back to Oregon State. Uh, he's coached Canadian League football. Yeah. I mean, he's done it all. 
wealth of knowledge, that's for sure. He's been a defensive coordinator. He's been an offensive coordinator. He's been so a he's head just coach. got awful luck. I kind of look at it that way. I kind of look at it that way. Um, yeah, it's too bad. I mean, I would hate to say that anybody around here hates him. I don't think anybody hates him. Just no. kind of like, hey, man, it's not working. Right. <laughs> We're going to go try this now. So I hope it works out. Uh, yeah. Hadn't been very stable around here for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. You know, Osborne retires, and he appoints Frank Solich, who was a, a running back, and then he was a graduate assistant, offensive coach, and then a head coach. Then he gets ran off. What, what's amazing to me is he got ran off by uh, Steve Peterson. Steve Peterson was the athletic director that fired him. And then Steve Peterson went to Pitt and did the same thing to Dave Wonstadt. Wonstadt was an offensive lineman that blocked for Tony Dorsett. And he's All-American. He's in the Hall of Fame there. I'm sure he's got his number retired and all that. Plays in the NFL, coaches in the NFL, and then when the Dolphins fire him, he comes back to Pitt to be the head coach where he played his college football. Everybody's dream job, right? right. And Pitt Panthers are nothing special. I mean, they're mediocre. Bad every year. Steve Peterson's the athletic director there and fires him too. It's like, what do you expect? What are you gonna? How are you gonna get better than that? I don't know. They've never been good. Yeah, never been great. So, I don't know. And then, you know, when he fired Solich here, he hired Bill Callahan. And there's nobody that's hated more in the state. Our situation has not improved. <laughs> Why is that? Oh, he just... He just ruined everything. I mean, he... I, I had heard stories where he was not even at practice, and he was just kind of like a CEO type of coach and uh, Kevin Cosgrove was a disaster as a defensive coordinator um, yeah it was just it wasn't good he was just trying to change things that definitely did not need to be changed the only good thing he did was he recruited good players that's why when Bo Pelini got hired he had a decent team I mean, he had, shit, he had Indomitian Sue for two years. You know? <laughs> that helps things. Yeah, definitely. What I always thought, you know, what Nebraska was always known for is, he's, is having just, like, big dudes, and they just played smash-mouth football. Oh, yeah. And just beat the hell out of people, man. Exactly. That's what it's, Scott Frost said at his press conference, too. He said... He's like, I know the times have changed, but we're going to get back to a lot of the things that still work. And uh, Eric Crouch was interviewed. He was on 1620 AM, I believe. And he said practice was the hardest thing that he ever went through. He said there was days he had to drag himself off the field. And he said because of that, games were pretty easy. <laughs> Most of them, you know? Yeah. And I knew, briefly, I knew a, a guy that played offensive line in the 90s during all those championship runs. And I just asked him one day, because he played in the NFL too, and I said, who was the toughest dude you ever faced? And he said, Jason Peter in practice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. It's like, wow, that's crazy, man. But, yeah, that's the way it used to work. You imagine, and, though, if, if Nebraska gets back to playing, like, smash-mouth football with as much as everything's been lightened up, you know, as far as, like, there's there's more emphasis on the frill of football these days. You know, everybody's, they, like, the West Coast offense thing came out. You know, everybody's everybody's doing, like, run and gun, West Coast style, this kind of thing. It, Nebraska comes back to just being big and just pushing people around. I don't... I don't think anybody would really have an answer for it in the near-term future, at least, you know. Yeah. It, it would take a while to adjust. That was one of the, what? probably the quote of my lifetime is when Scott Frost was in his press conference. 
and a guy asked him, how are you going to modify your system to fit the Big Ten? And he said, I hope the Big Ten has to modify to fit us. <laughs> I just loved it. It was perfect. Great. It was a great quote. So great. I mean, yeah, when he took over Central Florida two years, they were 0-12. And, and his first year, they were 6-7, and I believe. And then this year, they're 12-0, and and they're playing in a, in a Peach Bowl against Auburn. And both athletic directors, the one he's leaving, the one he's hired by, they both left it up to him. And he said, yeah, I want to coach the bowl game because I don't want to leave those kids without a coach. And I feel like I owe it to them to try to have the perfect season. And I hope they beat Auburn. It's a tall challenge because Auburn beat Alabama this year. <laughs> and, yeah, she's Alabama. Alabama and Clemson play in one of the – uh, semi-final playoff games third time third year in a row they play each other two years ago Alabama won won the national championship last year Clemson beat them won the national championship be pretty interesting to see what they do this year it's going to be a hell of a game and I think the other one will be good too Oklahoma, Georgia be something nice I'm looking forward to it. It's always interesting when you get good matchups like that. And look, looking at it, there are some good matchups, and then there's just some that who gives a shit. Like I, <clears throat> like some. Uh, I think my brother asked me. He's like, "Is uh, because you're from Oregon?" And he said, "Is Oregon's bowl game gonna be worth watching?" I said, I really don't know because Willie Taggart was there, coached him one year, and he already left to take the Florida State job, and Royce Freeman is not even going to play because he doesn't want to get injured because he's going to be in the NFL draft this spring. So what the hell's the motivation for the team and for anybody to watch it unless you're just a diehard fan? I mean, and you're talking about the flair of the game that, what is, Oregon has something like four million different uniform combinations. <laughs> Sounds about right. So ridiculous like that. Yeah, it, it, it helps to have the CEO of Nike as an alumni. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For real. But, I mean, that's hilarious. Remember they got like ten different helmet colors, and then you got all in damn jerseys and pants and shit. That's amazing. Right. It's hilarious. Yeah. I, there's, yeah, they're, they, and they are. They're, they're all about speed in Oregon, though. And like that's their thing is, and and I was so excited to see them, and then when they played um, Alabama, yeah, they totally just like went away from their hurry up offense and just outrunning everybody to trying to play like smart football, <laughs> right? You know, uh, yeah. in normal football, and they got their asses whipped. Yeah, I, they're a. Uh... They always did things unorthodox, I guess is one way to put it. And on the offensive side, it worked. Because, you know, Scott Frost was the quarterback coach and the offensive wide receivers coach, then the quarterback's coach and the offensive coordinator, and they had Marcus Mariota. You know, they'd, I think they averaged like 40-some points per game just in the first half. Right. And it was ridiculous. <laughs> but then on the defensive side, they ran like a three-man front, Mm -hmm. And, like, their defensive ends were 6'8 and 6'9. They were, like, basketball players or something Pretty crazy. Much, yeah. And it was just so weird how different that was. So, I don't know. It, it was interesting to watch, though. But, yeah. I mean, I don't know what the hell they're going to do now. Uh, just, it, it kills me. Like you know, teams like Oregon, they they had they had a recipe for success that they deviated from and fell on their face. And same with Nebraska, where they had a recipe for success, you know, and being just big and strong, yeah, pushing everybody around, and they deviate from that, you know. I'm like, go back to it, see if it see if it works, you know. Yeah, interested to see what Florida State's gonna do because Bowden and Jimbo Fisher were there forever. Now they're both gone. And he willingly left that job to go to Texas A&M. So now he's got to play Nick Saban every year. <laughs> you got knocked the fuck out! <laughs> I don't quite understand that one, but whatever. 
Oh well. You never know. They're telling you. Never know what the behind the scenes type of stuff is. They're telling me that I need to make dinner. Alright. Well, we can wrap this up, man. This is a good time. It's getting cold. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely ready to go in and warm up. But yeah, thanks for doing this. Even if it was anonymous.